Welcome back to another Wonder Wednesday. We're going to begin with some news and updates. First of all, New Jersey Literacy Association would like to wish everyone a happy Halloween this week if you're out celebrating. Please make sure that whatever you do, you do it safely. Also, we'd like to remind you that you can tell us what topics you'd like to see more of in our read-alouds. We love to hear from you and have chosen many books based on your input. Email us at njliteracy at gmail.com. Or you can also send me a direct message on Twitter at Dr. Kenneth Kunz. If you need to catch this information, just pause your screen and jot it down on a post-it. We want to give a student shout out to all the students who've been reaching out to us about what they've been reading during the first months of school, especially Marco. Marco asked us to read him the story, Where's My Mummy? And we sent him his own personal recording of a read aloud. We'd love to do the same from you, and so we'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you'd like us to share on our New Jersey Literacy Association YouTube page. Today's daily affirmation is actually really funny if you look at the picture on the screen. We've got a little bit of a spooky background going on for spooky season, but we also have a daily affirmation that reads, go ahead and read it with me. I can stop letting others drain my energy. Wow, what does that mean? Well, if you look at the picture, it's also a hint for the story that we're going to have this morning. I can, let, I can stop letting others drain my energy. I think when you have energy, if it, somebody's draining it, they're kind of taking it from you. And that's not really a good thing, especially if you have a positive energy. And so I think this daily affirmation is telling us that if you have a positive energy and you wanna have fun, don't let others stop you from spreading that positivity. All right, let's check out what's going on with this week's story. I bet you're already wondering based on the picture. Before we begin, I thought it'd be a fun way to start off um, giving you some more hints about our story by looking at this really cute video from americangreetings.com. Right, one, two, three, go. Ah, I'm a scary bat. Give me some candy or I'll bite you some holes in you. Are you scared? No? Okay. Oh, you. I am death at your doorstep. I'll get you, my pretty. I am 100 years old. That's 700 in dog years. You were playing with the Ouija board, and now you must pay. I am not a dog with a sheep. I am a evil ghost. Am I scaring you yet? How about now? I saw you flinch. Boo! Eee! Ugh. Aw, man. Mom, you're not making my costumes anymore. I can't scare anybody. Now what I'd like you to do is pause and go back and watch the video again. Pause and ponder. Ponder means to think. Which of those costumes is your favorite? For me, it's definitely when the dog dresses up as a vampire. Before we begin today's story, I'd like to let you know that I, I'm thankful for the permission we have from Simon & Schuster to read this story to you. There are two words, and you're probably already coming up with a prediction about what this text might be about, but I'd like to become word nerds before we go into our reading. The first word is fangs. My turn. Fangs, your turn. Go ahead and say it. Great. Now I'm going to clap out the syllables that I hear. My turn. Fangs, your turn. How many syllables was that? Great. Talk to me about the word fangs. Yeah, they're definitely sharp teeth. We saw them in our daily affirmation today too. I wonder what this has to do with our story. The next word is trait. My turn, trait, your turn. Great, 
I'm going to clap the syllable. My turn. Straight, your turn. How many syllables was that? Yeah, you're right. These are both one syllable words. Trait is a characteristic, kind of like if you have sharp teeth, it might be something that's passed down in your family. And so we're going to have to see what that means for today's story. Okay, so here it is. I Love My Fangs by Kelly Lee Miller. You notice that the word fangs was one of our juicy words, and it also showed up in our daily affirmation. So I'm sure many of you were predicting that this is what the story would be about. Let's see what happens. I love my fangs. They are pointy. They are sharp. They are a family trait. Remember, we talked about how the word trait means that it might be something that's a characteristic passed down in your family. When I look at all of these pictures, I see that all of the family members seem to have sharp teeth. Good care is important. My fangs are very special. Pop. <laughs> Take a look at the picture. He's using his fangs to pop open his juice box at lunch. Uh-oh, what's happening in this picture here? I want you to pause for a second and think about it. What's going on with his tooth over here where he's asking a little question mark here, like he's confused, something may have happened. I can push it back in. Oh no, it looks like he lost a loose tooth. Oh no, a vampire can't have only one fang. What if I tape it? Tie it? Stick it? Oh, that's funny. He's taped it, he's tied it, and now he's trying to stick it with, it looks like that's a box of bubble gum. No one could possibly notice. Pop! Oh no, they're all laughing at him. And his tooth is on the loose again. I'm never coming out again. My fang. Looks like someone has come to visit him in the night. Who could that be? Oh, you think it's the tooth fairy? I see you're making a connection as a reader. Doesn't look like he's able to catch her. This is my fang. What on earth is going on? Looks like that's coming from upstairs. Who's going to come downstairs and stop him? She is stealing my fang. Silly Dracula. She's the tooth fairy. It's her job. She takes your baby teeth so you can grow strong adult teeth. But this one is mine. I don't want to give it up. Maybe you do need it more. One fang is better than none. Oh, look what's happening overnight. It looks like he's got a new tooth growing in. Look at my new fang. It's so pointy. It's so sharp. And I can't wait for the other one to pop out. Hey, so now that we've read the story, I want you to think about the story through the lens of satisfying story endings. When I think of a satisfying story ending, I think about what it really means when you're satisfied. For example, like when I'm eating dinner, if you have a satisfying dinner, there's no food left on your plate at the end of the meal. 
if you kind of ate your food, there's still food left over. So it may not have been satisfying, but you were kind of okay with it. And if you're one of those people who spread your food around the plate because you don't want to eat it, it's definitely not a satisfying meal. So when I think about a satisfying story ending, I look for three things. One of the things that I look for is a resolution to the character's problem. And in this story, there was definitely a resolution because the character ends up getting his tooth back and he has a brand new tooth that grows in its place and he's back at the end of the story with his pointy and sharp fangs. So there's definitely a resolution. The second thing I look for is if there are parts from the beginning and middle that show up again. And you may not have noticed this, but in the very beginning of the story, you can go back and watch it again. You'll see that his mom and dad are on a picture on the wall really proud of their son and smiling at him. And at the very end of the story, that shows up again because they're proud and they're holding each other and they're saying, oh, your tooth is so pointy. Once again, proud of their son. And so that shows up at the beginning and also later in the end. The last thing I try to think about is if there's a settled feeling that everything's all right, whether it's happy or sad. And I think there was definitely a settled feeling because at the end of this story, he has his tooth again and he's okay with the fact that he lost his first tooth. We'd like to know what you think in the books that you're reading. Are there satisfying endings? Why don't you pause and jot these down in your notebook? What are you going to look for? Is there a resolution to the character's problem? Do you see some parts from the beginning and middle that show up again at the end? Is there a settled feeling at the end in your heart that everything's okay, whether it's happy or sad? Jot these down and see if you can find them in the books that you're reading at home. Once again, we'd like to wish you a happy Halloween. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep it up, New Jersey.